for all of the criticisms you could level at modern gaming, especially modern AAA open world gaming, if you could find fault with the soaring ambition and peerless attention to detail which has gone on to define one of the 21st century's most enduringly popular, successful and acclaimed studios. Rockstar Games. Well, unless you're including their recent ports and remasters, in which case maybe there's some diminishment there, yeah. 2021's Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy, the definitive edition, which is still a stupid name, definitely felt like something of a phone-in, truth be told. And then there's the two successive re-releases of Grand Theft Auto V. And how about that basic-ass port of Red Dead Redemption to PS4 and Switch? Like, why no PC? But when it comes to brand new releases, Rockstar very rarely lets anyone down. Okay, so, okay, so there's still like nine of us waiting for Agent to come out, but let's get back on track here, guys, come on. Best known for the aforementioned cultural juggernaut that is the Grand Theft Auto series, not to mention the might of the highly acclaimed Red Dead saga, there's a lot to unpack from a company that has helped to define the last few decades of mainstream popular culture. From school politics to ping pong, pistols to police procedurals, GTA 5 to GTA 5 and another two different times, let's dive into the very best that Rockstar has to offer. But before then though, if you want to win yourself a free Steam key for Grand Theft Auto 5, be sure to comment 32k gang down below and we'll pick a winner next week. Right, prepare yourself for Austin Powers at number 1. Number 20, Red Dead Revolver. Alright, so it's not the greatest game to bear the Red Dead stamp, but that's no reason to skip over the title that introduced players to Rockstar's take on the Wild Wild West. A sort of arcade-styled rail shooter which favours more classic linear levels over a sprawling open world, Revolver retains a cult following thanks to its gung-ho tone, meaty shooting and, most likely, the subsequent popularity of the Red Dead saga as a whole. Sure, it lacks the emotional depth of the games that would follow, with a slightly cartoonish, sometimes knockabout tone. Some of the enemy death noises are pretty... funny. <laughs> but there are heaps of fun to be had zipping around the American West, burning through lead as though you're trying to cause a national shortage as you dispatch scores of enemies with your trusty six-shooters. It also marks the introduction of the infamous Deadeye targeting system that would become a series staple, as well as the birth of dueling as an iconic Red Dead combat mechanic. If you want the de facto arcade ass spaghetti western game, Revolver is plenty charming. Number 19, Rockstar Table Tennis. Somewhere within the walls of Rockstar's offices during the mid-2000s, some bright spark had the idea of ditching the virtual Kalashnikovs and bazookas in favour of a couple of red and black ping pong paddles. Maybe there was a table in the break room, maybe it was a bet, or maybe Rockstar wanted to muscle in on the sports game market without having to compete with the might of EA Sports. Rockstar Spin on table tennis remains one of the few sports-oriented titles the studio ever released, not that you'd know from actually playing it. While some players criticise the game for a lack of overall depth, I mean, how deep can a ping pong sim ever truly be, mind? Most contemporary critics were enamoured with its smooth, fluid animations, competent AI and addictive replayability, all of which still hold up remarkably well today, especially if you play it on Xbox Series through backwards compatibility. In short, it's... Ace. Why are you boring me? I'm Ray. Sorry. My personal favourite thing about this though, it used to be more commonly called Rockstar Games Presents Table Tennis, as if Rockstar was presenting the very idea of the sport. It's like them calling San Andreas, Rockstar Games Presents the idea of keeping up with the damn train. Number 18, Midnight Club, Los Angeles. It's a shame that Rockstar seemed to have, for now at least, parked the racing genre in a metaphorical underground lot because if the Midnight Club franchise is anything to go by, they're bloody good at it. 
Los Angeles holds up as one of the franchise's standouts, famed for its exceptional levels of customization, outstanding visuals and majestic capturing of the LA street racing scene without any annoying influences. God, it was a, it's a simpler time. However, that's not to say that Rockstar couldn't dig deeper into the nitty gritty mechanics that define whether or not a racing game lands poor position or veers off into a nearby storm drain. As an arcade racer, Midnight Club Los Angeles remains one of the finest of its type, with smooth yet pulsating drive mechanics providing a prime platform from which to enjoy the streets of LA as it hurtles past the windows of your souped up Ford GT. GTA V may have some mighty fun racing, but it doesn't quite hit the same. To quote Rockstar, the best way to see Los Angeles is at 245 miles per hour. Number 17, Grand Theft Auto 2. It's hard to imagine now, but in the late 90s, nobody knew what GTA would go on to become. The first ever entry in the era-defining saga debuted back in 1997 to moderate critical approval, accompanied by solid sales. And while 1999's sequel built on that stable platform, the top-down crime sim hadn't quite seen the franchise hit its straps yet. As we'll get to in a little while, 2000's third installment was still waiting in the wings. Yet there's plenty to admire about Rockstar's second bite of what would become a colossally successful and profitable cherry. Following the saga of a nameless ne'er-do-well tossed with performing various unsavoury missions for a range of even shadier criminal organisations, there's certainly a sense of a franchise just starting to take shape. The retro-futuristic setting of Anywhere makes for an appropriately gritty backdrop, coupled with a pleasing variety of diverting missions and story points. There's a lot more here than the somewhat basic visuals may suggest, but the complexity and true ambition was still to come. Number 16, Manhunt. Don't tell the Daily Mail. There shall be no happy ending for this gringo fool. <laughs> It's quite the accolade when you share a list with, incredibly obvious spoiler alert here guys, multiple Grand Theft Auto titles and still stand out as the most contentious entry on the entire arse rundown. Whatever coffee-based controversies the iconic GTA saga would court over the years, they've generally paled in comparison to the intense scrutiny that followed the release of 2003's Manhunt. It's not hard to see where such hysteria came from, especially in a world that hadn't yet had to suffer through Hannah Montana. Manhunt was unapologetically grim and nasty and, despite its age, still provokes a shudder of unease and a few waves of nausea with every plastic bag based takedown and cold blooded execution. All that aside, the stealth mechanics are implemented with Rockstar's signature style, lending the game far more depth and replayability than its grimy exterior might initially suggest. Nobody made being a bad dude feel so very good, quite like Rockstar. If you can see past the savagery, especially if you've been browsing the horror section on Steam for longer than, I don't know, 10 minutes, there's a very solid stealther lying beneath the grotty surface of this trip to Casa City with the kind of grim cynicism that you just don't get in the mainstream these days. Number 15, Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition Remix. Though Midnight Club Los Angeles was a fine addition to the series, the third instalment was surely its polished apex. Set across three US cities, including the heartland of American motoring at Detroit, MC3 tasks players with distinguishing themselves as the finest street racer on the grid, all while customising their sweet rides and unlocking new vehicles in a bid to rise the metaphorical ranks of the underground circuit. It's pretty comparable to the best of the Need for Speed series, sharing a similar setup and sensibility with something like Most Wanted or Underground 2, which is still a banger by the way. We reckon it might even outstrip the NFS franchise in a few key spots, with a more challenging AI that pushes you to become the best rubber-burning king of the streets that you can possibly be. Very few games before or since have captured the intensity and pulse quickening majesty of the underground racing circuit quite like this slice of pure 2000s brilliance, and we can't imagine that many ever will. Nobody was talking to you, please go away. Number 14, Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. Uh -huh. 
even now in 2024, the fact that Rockstar managed this way back in 2005 on the PSP still feels like absolute witchcraft to us. When it revolutionised the franchise in 2001, the supreme breakout success of GTA 3 gave Rockstar an almighty sense of confidence that this was an IP worth pursuing. I mean, they just had to look at their wallet, but yeah, mainline sequels would inevitably follow, but Rockstar was so buoyed by the overwhelming critical and commercial success of the third GTA title that they launched a superb spin-off in the shape of Liberty City Stories. Set naturally within those towering, grimy, yet electrifyingly alive streets so heavily inspired by New York City and the urgent clamour of American urban life, Liberty City Stories took what had been great about GTA 3 and, rather than compromise it for a smaller console too much, ran with it to sublime effect. The best-selling PSP game of all time at 11 million units sold, which for reference is like 11 million Kill the Justice Leagues. Liberty City Stories proved that you could capture such an enthralling open world title on a scaled down console that we still think is due its flowers. Number 13, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Portable markets are rarely as well served as their bulkier mainstream contemporaries, but Rockstar really cared about handheld gaming for a, a while back then, let's be honest, with Chinatown War standing tall as the undeniable and enduring proof of just that. Released initially for the DS, then later for the PSP and iOS devices, it saw Rockstar aiming to stamp the earlier top-down GTA sensibilities onto a market better known for small-scale baking sims, cutesy management titles, and Carol Vorderman. But could they hold a candle to the big Vords? Boy, did they manage it. Capturing the anarchic majesty of the mainline saga in all its glory, albeit on a obviously smaller scale, the tale of protagonist Huang Li's search for revenge on the streets of Liberty City truly enthralls despite its diminutive mode of delivery. Chuck in some lovely cell shaded graphics and the ability to sell a lot of drugs and you have the closest thing to a cult hit that the series possesses. If nothing else, it's easily among the best Nintendo DS games ever made. Take that, Nintendogs. Number 12, Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. If you hadn't quite managed to get your fill of the drug fueled highs of 80s Miami from the mainline Vice City game, Vice City Stories was the next best thing. Released for the PlayStation Portable in 2006 before enjoying a port to the PlayStation 2 in the following year, Vice City Stories captured the boisterous excesses and glamorous superficiality of the main game with striking confidence. What does that mean though? Well, portable murder, but more pink. There's no Tommy Vercetti here with players controlling ex-army corporal Vic Vance as he navigates the Miami drug scene in a bid to raise money for his ailing brother. Oh, that's nice, wait a minute, who's a major player in the original Vice City. Vic's intentions may be reasonably pure, and while Vice City Stories provides a more scaled down experience than that offered by the mainline game, it easily captures the charm and tone of Rockstar's version of 80s Miami. From the neon-soaked open world to the little digital empire you can build, everything's at your disposal to cause maximum mayhem for maximum satisfaction. I mean, it's got the actual Phil Collins in it. That'll do us. Number 11, The Warriors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it on you! You are gonna <laughs> If you happen to have been born sometime after 2000, wow you lucky youth, please don't waste these years, grow your hair out, you won't regret it. You might not have heard of the 2005 beat-em-up smash The Warriors, or even less likely, the 1979 cult thriller, itself adapted from a Saul Uric novel, upon which it's based. Cinematic and literary context aside, Rockstar's slightly strange decision to adapt a movie that had come out more than 25 years previously ended up becoming one of its most satisfying and downright enjoyable offerings of all time. Beat'em ups live and die on how satisfying and replayable the combat and levels end up being, and in this regard, Rockstar nailed its brief with bone-rattling aplomb. Campy, brutal, and endlessly replayable with some truly crazy good visuals for the 6th gen, the joy of essentially barrel rolling into a whole pack of rival gang members never quite wears off in the Warriors, no matter how many times you come out to play, yay. 
and it's one of the best PS2 beat-em-ups ever made, as well as probably being that rare adaptation that's even better than the movie. Do you agree or disagree with that? Be sure to let us know down below. Number 10, L.A. Noir. They was working on the tires. That's all that was took. It may sound like an odd thing to say about a company that has staked much of its reputation, inadvertently or otherwise, on a few mammoth franchises, but one of Rockstar's most endearing traits has always been their desire to try something new in the hopes of a unique result. They did it with table tennis, they did it with the Warriors, and they certainly did it with L.A. Noir. I had a bit of a tremble in my voice when I said Noir then. Noir. <laughs> Action adventure police procedurals are still rather few and far between, yet Detective Cole Phelps' investigation of a drug distribution ring within 1940s Los Angeles, Rockstar sure love LA, don't they? Felt like a watershed moment for audiences to realise just how engrossing such titles could be if done correctly. Open world roaming remains, albeit in a much more restrictive form. Yet LA Noir really builds its church around those core procedural mechanics, questioning witnesses, interrogating suspects and hunting for very subtle clues within the game's deeply immersive virtual world. The most impressive thing about L.A. Noir though, Rockstar had to step in at the last minute to save it from self-inflicted development hell at Team Bondi. Without that Rockstar touch, there's no way this is even a fraction as good. Number 9, Grand Theft Auto 3. Bang. This was the true moment of genesis for Grand Theft Auto. Gone was the top-down bird's eye viewpoint, replaced by a third-person perspective that continues to define the franchise today. GTA 3 was released just a couple of years after the moderate success of the second game, yet the contrast between the titles is hard to believe. The best-selling release of 2001 was a complete game-changer. Rarely had such immersion been captured with such authority and majesty, with Liberty City humming with the vibrant energy of the hulking metropolis from which it drew influence. Following small-time criminal Claude's wordless rise through the ranks of the criminal underworld, GTA 3 was an explosion of the elements that has gone on to define the franchise as a whole. Carjackings, drive-bys, shootouts with the cops, you know, all that proper GTA stuff. Rockstar ran with what they developed during the early 2000s, and they haven't looked back since. GTA 3 may be rough around the edges nowadays, but remind an old head of the joy of nicking a banshee from a car lot window, and they will start beaming from ear to ear. Number 8, Max Payne 3. Last year, we being in the Games Eternal fan club cited Max Payne 3 as one of the games to play before you unalive. While such accolades are never handed out lightly, we'd once again urge you to consider Rockstar's bullet time bonanza as arguably the finest entry in the saga and one of Rockstar's most gut-punching glories. Rockstar didn't have developmental control of the first two instalments in the Max Payne saga, taking the reins proper for the frequel to blistering effect. Gunplay feels meaty, satisfying and varied, while the added weight and dare we say realism added to diving about in slow-mo bullet time lends a greater sense of punch and gravity to proceedings. Add to this the raw, gonzo-style VHS visual tone which defines the game's hard-edged aesthetic, and you've got a recipe for blood-soaked success. Max himself might be as acerbic and rough around the edges as he's always been, but this feels like the apex for protagonist and series alike. This is probably the last linear game Rockstar will ever make, but what a whipper it remains. Number 7, Bully. What a game Bully is. I mean, we've had it as the soundtrack for our list videos for so long that it's basically part of the furniture around here. Listen, it's even playing right now! Hey, eh? Falling happily into the category of cited as underrated so often that it's no longer underrated at all, there remains a fundamental lack of understanding surrounding one of Rockstar's ballsiest, most innovative and downright enjoyable releases ever. 
crammed with content and boasting one of the best open world settings we can think of, it's possibly the only way to go back to school and actually have a good time. Set within the Dog Eat Dog Bullworth Academy, Bully has a sharp satirical eyes that takes on the ruthless brutality of those snobbish elitist institutions, bringing many of the mechanics and trappings of the GTA series and transplanting them into a far more incongruous and subversive setting. That's right, English class. As you guide gold-hearted, stone-fisted protagonist Jimmy Hopkins through the clicky world of the American boarding school, you will feel just a bit sad that that sequel will probably never happen. But then the soundtrack kicks in and you will be 13 years old all over again, if only for a minute. Number 6, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. There's no question that Vice City is not only many people's favourite GTA instalment ever, but it's quite a few people's favourite open world and PS2 game of all time. Sharply plotted, gloriously immersive, packed with life and often very funny thanks to its gleefully parodic lens, Vice City feels like a franchise really beginning to hit its stride. The true pleasure of Vice City lies within the streets of its eponymous setting. There's nothing like cruising the Miami beachfront in your Predator 2-seater, illuminated by the enchanting soak of neon lights, while being accompanied by those tangy tones of Wang Chung's dancehall days or Yes's owner of a lowly heart. If you can create a game in which simply existing within the open world is a sufficient enough reason to boot up your console or flip open your laptop just so that you can bask in those vibes, you've succeeded in your mission as far as we're concerned. Few moments in gaming history will ever top hopping into an open topped roadster and hearing Billie Jean blaring out for the very first time. Glorious. Number 5 Red Dead Redemption It perhaps seemed inconceivable to a keen gamer in 2010 that there would one day be a game and a protagonist to go with it that would oust the root into in splendour of the original Red Dead Redemption. Essentially the narrative sequel to the second prequel title, don't, don't worry about it, it makes sense. It's astonishing to look back at the first game and realise just how far the second game brought the technology, while also appreciating just how fun the original game still feels to play today. Man, is it a good time even after you've experienced the polished next-gen, now old-gen majesty of the 2018 prequel, John Marston's standalone adventure still stands up as a masterpiece in its own regard, packed with fully rounded characters, a riveting central narrative with beats that still land like a haymaker from Tyson, and a brutal, unforgiving landscape that just hooks into something deep within your subconscious and refuses to let go. Oh, and let's not forget Undead Nightmare, the zombie-flavoured expansion pack that could have ended up as a silly waste of time, but now holds up as one of the finest DLCs in recent memory, possibly of all time. Number 4, Grand Theft Auto 4. Nico, it's your cousin. You want to shoot some pool? Shit, Roman, I can't talk now. Damn. If Vice City was all about evoking the heady cocaine fueled excesses of the 1980s and GTA V eked out its satirical dividends from an era increasingly defined by social media, celebrity worship and a sort of vapid superficial cultural malaise, GTA 4 was all about picking apart the illusions of the American dream and leaving them in tatters upon the muddy turf. Such subject matter has proved popular within literature and movies before, yet few mainstream games possess the temerity to tackle such weighty subjects. Enter Nico Bellic, arguably GTA's greatest standalone protagonist, as he trudges the sidewalks of Liberty City, reborn for the seventh generation of consoles and dripping with the grime, filth and moral decay that fans had come to love and expect. There's very little glamour to be found as Nico forges his future in this ruthless new world melting pot, but boy is there a lot of polish to be found behind the scenes. From the highly developed AI controlling the patrolling police cars to the unparalleled immersion evoked by the jam-packed cityscape to the fact that you can ragdoll basically across the entire R city during a car crash, GTA 4 took the franchise to astonishing new heights, even as its protagonist was often forced to plumb desperate new depths in what we think may just be the best GTA story ever told. Number 3, 
Grand Theft Auto 5. I ain't going anywhere, Davy, until some more of these guys kill each other. An absolute colossus, if ever there was one. GTA 5 is by far and away one of the most successful games of all time, and their games online section has grown into an enduring success that continues to enjoy a bulging fanbase after more than 10 years. 10 since it opened its servers, and the gates of hell basically opened with it. What remains clear is that, however you experience it, players simply cannot get enough of GTA V and its unbelievably vibrant, varied and detailed open world. Los Santos pulses with life and a sense of scope and scale. So much so that you could spend every day of your waking life pounding its virtual streets and still find new ways to find mischief and mayhem. The three-person narrative, which flits between hot-headed Trevor, streetwise Franklin and retired con Michael, stands up as one of the finest and most involving GTA stories ever constructed, even if it is a little rushed towards the end, and when coupled with smoother, more involved core mechanics and a polished open world, including tennis, hell yeah, GTA V blossoms into a AAA titan of breathtaking depth and scope. A lot of us have been playing it since 2013, and there's still a lot more to discover yet. It's a shame that we never got the single player DLC that the game deserved though, but a sequel is finally on its way in 2025 in the shape of the hugely anticipated GTA 6. No pressure or impossible expectations to live up to there then. Number 2, Red Dead Redemption 2. If you ain't gonna be civilized about this, In many ways, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a flawed work. Its movement can be annoying, the more immersive mechanics can become repetitive, and it is ludicrously long with a few pretty big sagging points in its story. Guama, anyone? Few could ever call Red Dead 2 an absolutely perfect game, and yet it is undeniably a true masterpiece. A towering testament to Rockstar's unrelenting endeavour and boundary-pushing ambition, a prequel tale of Arthur Morgan and his band of ever-fading gunslingers has left a mark that few pieces of media, let alone video games, have ever come close to achieving. You can really sense the absolutely absurd budget in almost every pore of Red Dead Redemption 2, from the ability to start a conversation and feud with basically anyone, to the depth of its characters, to the shrinking horse balls. Red Dead Redemption 2 has set an impossibly high bar in terms of AAA open world design that frankly nobody has gotten near in the six years since release. Breathtakingly beautiful, staggeringly detailed, richly complex, and replete with a heart-rending character arc for the ages, Red Dead Redemption 2 is worth its plaudits and then some. However, it doesn't have Samuel L. Jackson, so the only true winner for the best Rockstar game of all time has to be number one. Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. Is this the greatest game that Rockstar has produced so far? Cluck? Yeah. It's easy to look at San Andreas now and, with the hindsight of more polished games, view it as increasingly antiquated, even absurd at times. There's an undeniably cartoonish aspect that the urban titles share with the likes of Vice City and GTA 3, which is apparent within about five seconds of the main cast starting to talk. That, of course, is part of the joy. San Andreas creates a world that, both then and now, can be impossible to tear yourself away from. Gamers had rarely seen a release that harboured the endless depth and ambition of San Andreas, a game bulging with side missions, customization options, easter eggs and aspirational body types. One minute you're sitting in the barbers pondering whether to go for dreads or a high top, the next you're comically BMXing around the local skate park trying to become the hood's answer to Matt Hoffman, all before cruising down to the gym to pump some iron in preparation for your latest cab driving assignment. 
Add to this the endlessly memeable monster main narrative, a blisteringly good licensed soundtrack, and some of the best, most bonkers missions in the series, and you have the makings of an undisputed classic and first ballot entry for the Video Game Hall of Fame, as well as Rockstar's absolute apex. And this is despite those f***ing RC missions, for f***s sake, f***ing flying, f***, so why won't you f***ing fly properly, you f***ing f***s? And that was our video looking at the very best Rockstar games ever, 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 ever made. What too high? What too low? Let's know down below. I, Jimmy, for Culture Vulture, and thank for watching.